Good day, Josh Sepnick here, and I am excited tonight to start the Faustino series. So those of you who have watched any of my AM refresh, you'll know that those are longer, anywhere from about half an hour to 45 minutes, covering major doctrines. This is different. It will be shorter, hopefully no more than 15 minutes. It will talk about a false teaching. It'll uh, talk about the main teachings of that uh, system. It'll talk about some of the main characters involved in that movement and I'll address it biblically. But I am not editing anything. I'm not putting any scriptures up, although I will mention some scriptures. Um, and then I'm just uploading it straight to YouTube. I'm hoping to get as many of these as I can about different false teachings to help you equip you uh, when you encounter them. Now the idea for Faustinos, I just have to say, I give the credit to my uncle Hal. He came up with the term basically for a fake, a fraud, a Faustino. I googled it. There's no such real term, but I liked it and I'm going to use it for these just so just so you know what it means. Um, so I decided to start with the biggest, most dangerous teaching in my opinion. And if it's not, then it's certainly right up there. A lot of people are probably thinking, well, that would be Roman Catholicism. That would be one of the cults. That would be Islam. That would be Hinduism. That would be the ecumenical movement or whatever. Uh, but it's actually not, not the one I'm going to talk about anyways. And you may have heard it called by a different name. You may have heard it called positive confession movement. You may have heard talk about positive thinking. Name it and claim it. Blab it and grab it. All right. The prosperity gospel. And I'm sure many other terms that I don't even know. But it can all be put under this one umbrella of what is called word of faith theology. And Word of Faith theology teaches that you have the power in your words to make things come to pass, to speak things into existence. And you may hear these sorts of things in the world today, but the truth is that these things have been taught through the Word of Faith uh, for generations, really. It goes back to a guy back in the later part of the 1800s, a guy named E.W. Kenyon. And he is really the father of this. And he studied metaphysical new thought, which was created by a guy named Phineas Quimby. Sounds very distinguished. Unfortunately, Quimby taught basically what is uh, occultic teaching that you can your speech is some kind of a force to make things come to pass. And what happened was E.W. Kenyon took this and he married it to the Bible and used God and twisted it. And now what you have is sort of this idea that God is some sort of a cosmic bellhop, some sort of a genie in a bottle that has to obey your wishes and your commands. Now this moved on. Um, it was not nearly as well known throughout even a lot of the charismatic or the Pentecostal movement in the first part of the 20th century. It was not embraced in there by and large. Um, but in the 1950s and 60s, you had guys uh, like Robert Schuller and Norman Vincent Peale that talked about the power of positive thinking. Uh, Oral Roberts would certainly be in this category. And then in the last few generations, you have kind of what we've come to know of the word of faith. So guys like Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Paula White Kane, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Hagen, uh, who's a little bit older in the movement, but definitely influential on some of these other people. Uh, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Paul and Jan Crouch, Jesse Duplantis, and Fred Price. And that, I assure you, is a very, very small uh, listing, although it's some of the most popular names of the movement, and I'll I'll name even other names later on. It is incredibly large and incredibly powerful, and pushed through the so-called Christian media, just in unbelievable ways. Um, so he took the Kenyon took these te teachings of Quimby, and it just rolled on and on until we get to where we're at today, and really. The word of faith theology is based off of what they call the little gods theology in Psalm 82, 6, where it says ye are gods. And Jesus actually brought this up to the Pharisees um, to kind of trap them when they were trying to trap him. But it's not actually calling 
uh, people, gods, in the sense of God. And people need to understand that. And just twisting a verse out of context. There is only one God, right? The Shema in, in uh, Hebrew, it's uh, Deuteronomy 6.4. Every Jew knew that. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus quoted it in Mark 12, 29. Then he went further. He said, you're to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. 1 Timothy 2, 5, there's one God. And there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So their little God's theology basically allows them to teach that because you are God's, made in the image of God, that you have the power to speak things into existence. But I want to show really quickly how they have a different Jesus, a different spirit, and a different gospel. Uh, there's a, many warnings in the New Testament against false Christs. Matthew 24, verses 5 and 24. Uh, and those are repeated actually in the books of Mark and Luke as well in those gospels. 2 Corinthians eleven four, where Paul warns about another Jesus, uh, false Christs. Mark 13, 22. And in 1 John 4, 1, there's talk about the spirit of Antichrist. Now, there's many Antichrists, Paul goes on, or excuse me, John goes on to say in the book of 1 John. And, of course, to test the spirits. Well, what about the spirit of a guy like Morris Corello? Huge, in the, like the 1970s and 80s, huge word of faith, healing guy. What does he say at one of his, uh, one of his se uh, not seminars, basically, one of his healing sessions? He said, you're not looking at Morris Corello. You're looking at God. You're looking at Jesus. And maybe you say, whoa, that's blasphemous. That's way too far. You've got to understand, that's what these guys believe. That is at the heart and soul of Word of Faith theology. And they, I could say much more on that. I'm going to move on to point number two. They have a different Holy Spirit. And this is almost even uh, easier to see than the different Jesus. But we know that Jesus said to the woman at the well in John 4, 23 and 24, those that worship God have to worship him in spirit and in truth. And in 1 John 16, or excuse me, in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 8 through 11, Jesus talks about how the Holy Spirit will come and he'll convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. In Acts 1, 8, uh, we're told right as Jesus ascends to heaven, he says that you'll receive power. The Holy Ghost will come upon you after he's gone. So you'll be my witnesses. And the Greek word for that is martyrs for him. Literally dying to self and sometimes physically dying to carry out the Great Commission. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Uh, also Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. But the problem is that the people in the word faith movement don't trust in him. They trust in themselves. And they put faith in their faith, not faith in God. David Cho is the president, or the pastor, I should say, of the world's largest church building anyways. Maybe he's like a president there. I don't know. It's in Seoul, South Korea. And he has these faith formulas he came up with, which really, and he understands this, it's the fourth dimensional power of the occult. He's using the same things that are taught in the occult. There's a total spirit of greed. If you want to talk about a spirit, it's not the Holy Spirit, it's the greedy spirit. Remember watching a video of Kenneth Copeland, huge word of faith in the last few decades, probably nobody bigger in the word faith movement, where he talks about money. He says, money come to me. And you can look up that clip yourself. It's just unbelievable, the greed of that man. Robert Tilton. Uh, he ha came up with success in life where poor people would give him money so that God would bless them financially. And of course, really, he just cared about their money. Uh, Oral Roberts, who built, a, by the way, built a giant hospital that never got used because he thought God told him to, also claimed that Jesus appeared to him and told him that God had chosen him to cure cancer. And then he goes on to say, to them, this is not Oral Roberts asking for money, but their Lord. So utter blasphemy, just taking a place. I think of when people say about the ant spirit of Antichrist sitting in the place of Christ, and many people thought it was the Pope or think it's a Pope, which he is a sort of Antichrist. So are these people just claiming to be 
speaking on behalf of God, on behalf of Jesus, and all they want is the money. Third, they have a different gospel. Uh, Paul Croach said that the word of faith is a revival of truth restored by a few precious men. Really? Like Kenyon who said, what I confess I possess, basically blab it and grab it, name it and claim it. If you believe enough, if you speak it into existence, it will happen. But it gets worse than that because their gospel is so totally defiled. Kenneth Hagin had messages on such subjects as Satan conquered Jesus on the cross and God to be the biggest failure of all time. And before you think that that's just totally out of line with word of faith teaching, listen to a guy like Larry Hutch says that Jesus is not the only begotten son of God. Why? Because we're all sons of God. Well, we're adopted sons, not begotten. Oh, but they'll say that we're all begotten in the same way that Jesus is. They also say that Jesus was created or that the big one was that Jesus went to hell. He suffered. It was a man who died on the cross. Listen to this. A man who died on the cross, went to hell, suffered, died spiritually. And then he stopped becoming God and he had to be reborn as God. That's the teaching of the word faith movement. Just absolutely absurd. But this is the gospel. They, they don't believe that Christ's atonement was enough, that the blood was enough. And they participate in these bizarre practices like Benny Hinn frequenting the graves of Catherine Kuhlman and Amy Semple McPherson, who were both heretics in their own right, uh, to get the anointing from their bones for his, his, his farce of fake healing. But it's just so bizarre. And it is a different gospel. The prosperity gospel is a that God doesn't want you to be sick. That God doesn't want you to be, in, to be poor. He wants you healthy, wealthy, and wise. But like Ron Carlson, the great uh, apologist, the great uh, discernment leader who passed away years ago, as he said, if you add anything to gospel, it's no longer the gospel. So the prosperity gospel is not the gospel. In his book, by the way, uh, with Ed Decker, Fast Facts on False Teaching, excellent resource on this and uh, prosperity teaching and many other false teachings. So just a few things to come away with. Number one, this has more in common with the occult than Christianity, as I've already explained. Uh, number two, it denies the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith. And number three, by doing so, and just in its nature of its teaching, it elevates man to God, saying that man is in the place of God, or at the very least is co-equal with God and has command of God. Uh, if you want to hear more on this, like I say, I have so many resources I can recommend to you. Fast Facts on False Teaching is good. Uh, Charismatic Chaos by and, and Strange Fire by John MacArthur. Um I, there are just so, so many good resources out there I'd love to help you with. This is just meant to be very brief. I also want to clarify that Charismatic and Pentecostal, um, those who are in that movement, do not all believe this word of faith. Now, I will say this, that those Charismatic and Pentecostal beliefs give credence and kind of give birth to the word of faith and create an environment in which word of faith type teaching can prosper. And it's hard sometimes to separate the two. Um, also, uh, and I'll talk about this a different time, but charismatic and Pentecostal teachings uh, divert from the scriptures and from church history. And when they first came out in the early part of the 1900s and they first kind of became widespread, they were not recognized by Bible teaching, fundamental evangelical type churches at that time. Um, although there, like I say, there are many in that movement who are saved um, in the charismatic Pentecostal movement, albeit with some aberrant teachings, but word of faith, you cannot believe word of faith teachings and be saved. There's just absolutely no way. It's a completely different gospel. I said, different spirit, different Jesus. Um, I'm going to put up a couple of resources here, one from Got Questions, which is a little bit shorter, and one from Justin Peters, which is a longer look at that. So thank you. God bless.